Thank you very much for sticking with us. We have a lot to talk about this morning. Uh, it's a full plate, as always, and we're excited about the stories that we will be sharing with you this morning. We hope you have a great Thursday. Good morning, Nancy. Yes, good morning, Osarege. Good morning to you for watching us, tuning in. And we're so, we're so happy to know how much you've come to depend on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, you know, over time, you know, to give you the latest news and analysis of the stories. And we just want to say a, a quick, you know, condolences to the, the family of Dele Bandere and, you know, his family and millions of Nigerians who are mourning right now. Uh, if you've been following the news, he was declared missing. Uh, he was last seen at Omole Phase 2 and 3rd Midland Bridge. And then it was discovered that he, you know, he had passed. He committed suicide. He left a note saying he had battled depression for seven years. And it's just been a tough time for Nigerians, you it's know, pouring tributes from really sad story. all over. So, yes, speak up. Speak up, like we always say. It's uh, a problem shared. It's a, it's a problem half solved. You know, it's, it's also easy to encourage people to speak up, you know, but you can never really understand what their pain is, you know, at that time. And so, yes, they know that they should speak up, but it's, it's, it's not very easy. Um, going through that phase. But anyway, um, rest in peace to Dili. Uh, we're going straight into talking about what makes the headlines this morning. And uh, we've invited uh, Mr. Ezekiel Nyaya Tok uh, to join us. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us this morning, sir. Good morning. Always Good morning. a pleasure to be with Plus TV. All right. Uh, great to have you. We're kicking off with stories from the Punch newspapers. I uh, see as, as many of them as we can find this morning and share with you. Uh, the first one, the major one that you can already see there says, Lagos or your plan purchase, uh, Ogun State, Cross River and Benue fault allocations. Uh, we also have the CBN procedures creating bottlenecks for exports. And that's a, a coming from exporters. On the international scene, you must have heard the United States reps impeach Donald Trump for the second time over Capitol Hill invasion. NECO releases results, 233,000 candidates to retake missed subjects. And also, uh, Oshimbajo, the vice president, uh, Kiari and others meet oil majors over the petroleum industry bill. We can also find on the Punch newspapers this morning, uh, Buhari Ohaneze, Songwo Lu, others, Mon ex Lagos State Governor, Nubisi Kanu, and five killed as speeding bus rams into truck on Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Presidency faults quit warning to Kuka, uh, cautions cleric. And then we can squeeze in a few others. Uh, court dismisses suit against Akeridulu and Ajasin's daughter uh, plans appeal. Family seeks reduction in equity businessman's abduct, or rather, family seeks reduction as equity businessman's abductors demand 60 million naira. Ogun planning 10,000 housing units within two years, and that's from a, a commissioner. Um, Mr. Yair Tok, um, let's have you go ahead um, with uh, any of these stories that gets your attention. Okay, several of them get my attention. For instance, the... COVID-19, I think that is the main heading. And um, I don't know if we're having two different papers or something like that. In um, the punch, I have COVID-19 uh, vaccine. Uh, that's uh, the main stuff that I have uh, with riders, Lagos, open plan purchase, cross river falls, allocation, and all those things. So uh, that's on one hand. And something else that hits me, which you also brought up, is a 10,000 housing units that is um, planned by um, Ogun State as well. Yes. Um, for the universities um, going on strike, not going on strike, all those stuff, um, I'm, I'm getting really worried about the emphasis that we place on education by government and by the workers and how we can really sit down and be honest with ourselves because um, there's a lot of implications to the nation concerning our education system. We need to understand the, the larger implication of schools being shot. We don't seem to know that. In the 21st century, education is, is, is the oil of the future. And because without education, you can have technology. Technology is based on education. And without technology, you can't, you can't feature in the new uh, world order. So I think that the time has come when those of us outside must step in and tell government that they are saying things that they can no longer take for granted. I think that the problem with ASU, NASU, and, and the rest of them 
if we can sit down and have honest conversation with these people, if there's money, let the whole nation know that we have money. If there's no money, let the whole nation know that there is no money. You can't be giving us conflicting signals. We see the way you live, and then you say there's no money. It doesn't make sense. But let me go to the 10,000 housing units are planned by Ogun State. I would pray that that succeeds, and that the time has come when we must understand that housing must be considered as social infrastructure. Housing determines a whole lot of things. Look at the COVID-19 stuff. We are busy um, shouting social distancing. When people are sleeping 10 in a room, what's our long-term plan against infectious diseases where we live? Nobody's thinking of it. Must it come to a point where everybody's like, um, uh, they are saying things that are just not rocket science. And the time has come where we must start to embark on what I call cerebral governance. All this political right. governance has to come to an end. It's not doing us any good. Quickly, quickly also share your thoughts on the states planning to purchase their own vaccines. Uh, the, I think it also says here that uh, we are not involved in federal government's vaccine plans, and that is from Benue and others. Uh, would you, you know, uh, see it as abnormal uh, for states to be looking out for, you know, ways to purchase their own vaccines, aside from what the no, go federal government... No, no. It could, look, what do we call Nigeria? Nigeria is a federation. Nigeria is a federation. We, by right, even the states should have their certain laws, and only certain basics should be controlled at the center. That is my understanding of what a federation is. So for states to look at the health of a people, why, why would I, in a Ibom state, wait to determine the effects of my people as a governor from what the federal government says? Of course not. I wouldn't do that. Because things affect us differently. Our dynamics of living are different. Our mentalities are different. Our lifestyles are different. As a result, there's a peculiarity about every state and every environment. So we cannot keep generalizing and everything is centralized, centralized. It doesn't make sense. So I think that the governors that are thinking in terms of being able to get their vaccines, they are looking at the infrastructure in their states. The Pfizer of minus 70 degrees, you know, storage facility, one or two states may be able to say, okay, I find this more efficient. I find this more cost effective. Why don't I put up the structure that I'll be able to contain it? So they go for the one that they can contain because other states say, look, we don't have the money to be able to put up this sort of infrastructure to be able to contain this. So we go for India or we go for any other one. This, this Nigeria must start to solve its problems to be maybe location specific. All right. This over generalizing thing is not good. That's on one hand. Secondly, the transparency. The moment we don't prioritize frontline workers and we get them demoralized, we are in for a long haul. This thing about this um, being, being shrouded in secrecy so that politicians will get all this in. We are watching. We know it. We are watching. Let federal government come clean on this 100,000 or 50,000 that will come up. Let's know exactly where it's going to. Right. Frontline workers, the whole of Nigerians, we are supporting them. Politicians, I say no, and the Nigerians say no. All right. Okay, let's now turn to the next newspaper. It's The Nation. The big story here is about uh, the controversy surrounding Bishop Cooker's uh, Christmas message. And it says, beg or quit order, presidency warns Islamic Forum, Cooker. Can Christian Association of Nigeria, Kukuri Senator, caution GNI group? Makinde, deputy crisis deepens. It says, uh, no acrimony. 2,233,000 2, to write NSAR's disrupted NECO, and the results of 2020 to 2021 are out. How firms can link SIMS with NIN? And in Nondo State's Jegede PDP failed to bring 400 witnesses. And Buhari governors, Tunubu others, mourn Undubisi Kanu, the ex Lagos military administrator and pro democracy activist, dies at 77. All the stories here about COVID 19 is saying a businessman in Lagos, uh, you know, has passed from COVID 19 complications. Afe Babalala cautions on schools closure, Akonde six prayer against virus as birthday gift. Uh, PDP blames federal government for second wave of COVID-19. 
autumn test negative. I remember he tested positive just last Sunday. 20 UITH doctors infected in two weeks and U.S. orders negative virus tests for passengers. Mr. Ngerthuk, I think the biggest story here yeah. on the nation is this about president, um, um, the presidency warning Islamic Forum against um, about uh, Kuka. I mean, there's, there's been this threat about him, this, this controversy about the Christmas message with people, uh, him saying uh, the media and some sectors misinterpreting his, uh, his Christmas message saying that he called for a coup. And uh, on Twitter right now, people are asking that Kuka be protected at all costs if, you know, there's now this threat for him to beg or quit, even, him, even though he's come out to say that he would quit or beg only if you can point out where he was wrong in his Christmas message. What do you think about this controversy? I'll take one, two, three quick things. Number one is um, I I'm at a loss if to criticize the president um, who is a Muslim is, um, uh, is juxtaposed or tantamount to um, criticizing Islam. I want to know that. So that those of us that criticize um, President Jonathan, we will start to apologize to Khan because he was a Christian. And I don't think that if you look at the attack of President Jonathan, 99, even the spearheading, the arrowhead was the South. It wasn't even the North. The North was a lot more sympathetic to President Jonathan if you look at the details and the dynamics. The South hit him left, right, and center. And without the active collaboration of the South, the Southwest in particular, he would never have been removed from office. So I, I want us to draw certain lines. The president of, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in office is non-partisan. He is a Christian. He is a Muslim. He's a Northerner. He's a Southerner. So let not the Muslims take it up as Oh, uh, uh, if, you, if you hit the president, you are hitting Islam. And those who say that he was begging for a coup, uh, or rather he was instigating a coup, uh, I had to go and dust up my English again and read through the script. And up till today, I'm still at a loss as how what he said um, was tantamount to instigating or inciting or doing anything that could bring about a coup. All right. uh, that said on one hand, I have to commend the presidency for coming out and making a statement relatively early enough. But I want to say that that statement sounds more like an insecticide and uh, no, as a, you know, a, a deodorant and not as an insecticide. I think that there's something that, that President Obasanjo did to um, this Yoruba, Yoruba group when they were trying to cause mayhem. He went down there, he got their leader, and he actually, I mean, you could see the fire in his eyes. I will not accept this. I think that the presidency should make a very decisive statement that Nigeria is for Nigerians. In the South, um, you, you know, the, 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 the Igbo group, I'm, I don't know what's happening, I'm getting old, you know, cannot give a quick notice to the Northerners. You can't, you can't do that. Every right. Hausa, Fulani, or Fulani, or Nupe, or anybody has a right to live inside my village. And the, the reverse is also the case. The Northern yeah. Group, you can't issue quick notice. You can't do that. As a matter of fact, by now, one or two people should be cooling somewhere and answering questions. Then a strong signal would have been sent that every Nigerian has a right to reside in any part of this country as far yeah. as the present constitution exists. It's um, unfortunately, I don't, I'm, I'm guessing um, it's not the first time that we've had conversations like this, where statements like these have been made and, you know, uh, Nigerians would have expected the presidency to take action like you're describing now. Um, but, you know, as, as always, you know, nothing really ever happens. We've had, had it you know, happen with Mieti Allah before and with the Arewa Consultative Forum and, you know, some of their leaders and factional leaders. Um, so it's not, it's not the first time that we're experiencing or we're seeing a thing like this. But what do you think has led to, you know, us being in a situation where statements like this can be made freely um, without any repercussions? And I, I, wouldn't, I don't know if it's right to say that normally we shouldn't even expect the president to be warning anybody in the first place. 
the institutions, the systems in government should take care of things like that. You know, in, 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 in our state, there's an expression which says, a table dear, that is what has a test said. A test is always referred to, or gas, the leader, the master, which always comes to the governor. A table dear, what has the, the chief said? What has the governor said? In Nigeria is, what's the president's body language? Look at what is going on in America today. Strong institutions. Mr. Trump, you are the president, but for goodness sake, you are elected by the people to serve the people, so you are responsible to the people. You cannot do anything that is inimical to the interests of the generality of the people. The same thing applies in Nigeria. Mr. President, you are brought in here to serve the people. Anything outside of the constitution and the right of the people, we don't stand with you. We are SSS, we are the police, Nigerian police force, but our first allegiance is not to you, sir, with all due respect. Our first allegiance is to the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The day we start to do that, EFCC pursues anybody that is doing wrong, no matter which side of the divide it belongs. Look at today. Imagine the chairman of a party having the audacity, the effrontery, the animal boldness to proclaim that if you come to our party, your sins are forgiven. For goodness sake, mm -hmm. I think the president should have made a strong statement and said, no, I don't care who you are. The greatest statement that our president made was, I belong to everybody, I belong to nobody. And if he had stood on that, and it's not too late to go back to that position, once he does that, he'll be hailed as a leader. Anything outside of that, he will go down in history on the wrong side of it. Okay. Um, unfortunately, we, uh, of course, are out of time for our news review, mostly because we you know, had technical issues when we started, and so we kicked off late. Uh, but as always, uh, thank you very much, Ezekiel Talk. We will be speaking with you in a bit um, on yes. the impeachment of, or the second impeachment of uh, President Donald Trump. So, yes, hang in there with us. I would uh, come back to you in a bit. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir. Pleasure. All right. Uh, it still is the breakfast, and it's a very interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I agree with him on, you know, those aspects. Um, you know, there are certain things that you, you, sh you shouldn't necessarily wait to hear what the president will say first. Um, you shouldn't wait to, you know, see the president's body language at all times. There should be systems. There should be um, um, basically a way that the country works that wouldn't need, um, you know, the president to speak, you know, and address certain things. Certain things are um, um, against the law. And, and the president doesn't need to force anybody to go do their jobs. Indeed. If the security agencies need to act, they should act at certain times. It doesn't need to come, an order doesn't need to come from above first, you know, before security agencies take action where necessary. Um, and it's terrible that you can't really, you know, truly have free speech. You can't write an opinion piece saying, okay, this is where the government is getting it wrong, and this is what we can do to retrace our steps, and then Opposition groups take it that you're, you know, being antagonistic of the government, not knowing that you need diverse. You need that's a wrong diverse with being antagonist, uh, an antagonist of the government. Yeah, there's no need. There's exactly you well, need you need diversion of, uh, you know, mindsets of opinion so that you can you know, bring everybody together and you know borrow from different people's ideas. It's really um, also because of how deep we've gotten into uh, mixing every single thing that has to do with Nigeria and governance. We've mixed all of it with tribe and religion. And religion. Um, so unfortunately. Sad. And so when there's criticism, you know, there is immediately someone who drags in the religious perspective and the tribal perspective, which takes away focus from what truly has been said. And so these are, you know, diversions. They've always been diversions. They've always been uh, distractions from the main conversation. And it has also been one of the reasons why you would, you know, continue to see uh, persons in power, you know, simply because, you know, always from my tribe, or from, you know, it's a similar re religion with myself. Um, and you, you, you never get the quality of persons in positions of power that you need. You would always also get people um, ready to defend um, bad governance simply because his hours exactly. or she is out from outside.